this is going. Okay, so how how do you think it, you're going to clap on two? Which one? I'm I'm behind to you, right? Yes. Yeah, so I'll clap on two. You clap on three. No, that's going to make no. you. You clap on two. I'll clap on three. All right, ready? Let's try it. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. One, two, three. It was almost there. It was almost there. That was so close. <laughs> For me. It was almost a minute of silence. Like it was just, it's so, so different. Weird. Yeah. I think that was pretty darn close. I think we can use it. Well, I hope so. Well, I and love I, love, I love that that's our system now. And I also love, I can't wait to see this video uh, on our blooper reel. So that's great. Oh, our blooper reel is going to be long. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> doubt, didn't, never doubted it. Never yeah. doubted it. All right, let's get into it. Ready? Yeah. What's up, everybody? Welcome to a very special episode of True Crime and Cocktails Unsolved Mysteries Edition. Today's episode is something we're calling Twisted Tales. That's right. So as always, I am your host, Lauren Ash, and as always, my co-hostess was the mostest. I got to start over because I, I feel like I biffed it. All right. We're gonna, I'm going to start that intro. I don't think you did. Over. I think <laughs> Everything's fine. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, just one, one do over. I'll be fine. Yeah. I realized that I, I was beating myself up because I was like, say the names, then get into it. Anyway, it's my own personal note. Here we go. What's up, everybody? Welcome to a very special episode of True Crime and Cocktails. That's right. Today's episode is a bonus Halloween episode we're calling Twisted Tales. Woo! As always, I am Lauren Ash, and as always, I am joined by my co-hostess with the mostess. That's right. The intrepid researcher, my best friend, my cousin by blood, my sister by choice, Christy Oxborough. How you doing? I mean, after that, how can I be doing badly? I mean, while we're doing this, I can't be doing badly. Oh, bless you. I get to spend like almost two hours looking at your face, you know, like greatest time of my week. I'll tell you oh, that. gosh. You know, week. it's so funny because anytime we haven't recorded for like a week, if we've taken a week off or something, we're all, we're itching. By the time yeah. Friday rolls around, we're itching to go. And it, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're in constant contact. Constant. Constant. When like, people, like so often. <laughs> I, mean, we, I feel like we always kind of were, but it's been amped yeah. up to a level now that it's like from the moment my eyes wake <laughs> <laughs> the moment my eyes close, the text yeah. combo is going all about all things true crime and cocktails. Yeah. Well, we have one conversation the, the way we always are. We have one conversation going via text and then we have one going like through emails and then we have a different one going through like messenger. And it just depends on where, which story we want to talk about yeah. in that moment depends on which one you go to. That's right. We always use a different level of social media to uh, talk about different things. That's it right. Works. And I think it's always serious when recently, for example, I was like, I need you to call me. If someone says, I need yeah. you to call me, we know it's like, oh my God, has, has someone died? <laughs> yeah. But in yeah. this case, it was of course, because I had to call you to tell you that I had just recorded an episode of the Kelly Clarkson show and I needed you to know. I can't. Yeah. that your photographs <laughs> were going to be used. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then I just like full screamed at you. And I was like, do you know who she is? <laughs> As though you didn't. Obviously you did, but I was losing it because I mean, I, there's no hiding it. Let's just embrace it. Please. I'm a fan. She's I a huge fan. A fan. I believe the direct quote was, do you realize she was the first American Idol? <laughs> Which I was like, I do, and I love you. That, that's the thing for you. That's amazing. I mean, isn't that what everybody knows about her? Like, I don't know why I thought you wouldn't, but I was just, my brain, that's how my brain was processing the information. It was like, I'm sorry, Kelly Clarkson knows about me? Like, that was, that was it more than the photo. And then I, I saw the clip and was watching and I was like, okay, this is great. And then that first picture and I just went, bah! <laughs> <laughs> and then I hear like a chuckle down the hall and it was my husband doing the same thing. And so I'm like, oh, it's nice. <laughs> it's 
Nice. Well, listen, for our dear <laughs> listeners who I'm sure might like a little bit of this behind the scenes information. Uh, so one of the things I mentioned on the show, I don't know if you haven't watched it, what are you doing? Go and find Fine. it. We've posted it everywhere. Um, but one of the things I mentioned was that w- during one of our many text conversations, Christy out of nowhere just said to me, you know who I think would love us? And I was like, who? And she's like, Kelly Clarkson. Now here's what I didn't mention on the show is that at that point I was already scheduled to go on. And I had been keeping it a secret for a couple of reasons. First of all, I was like, I don't want to tell Christy that I'm going to go on and do this to promote the podcast. Yeah. If for some reason that changes, like, I don't want to tell her this is happening and then have to tell her, Oh, guess what? And listen, when you're doing talk shows and stuff like that, things can change. It's, it's not abnormal. So I was like, as I usually treat most things in my career. I'm like, unless it's been filmed and it's done, I don't believe it's going to happen. So I always wait until like the day that it's happened. And even then it's like, who knows how they're going to edit it. But anyway, so when she sent me that text, it was so hilarious because I was like, oh my gosh, if she only knew that I am going on that show and, and to talk about the podcast in a very short period of time. And then this is the other thing I got to admit, I felt sick that I was keeping something from you. (laughs) I was like, this is a nightmare. I feel like I'm lying by omission, you know? Look, I mean, I think it's for the best how it all worked out because I I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm a bit anxious. (laughs) (laughs) You? I I know. I I have horrific anxiety. Um, Like, for example... I could not love this more, this whole situation we have going on. Right. But I still physically ill, just physically ill before we record anything <laughs> because I'm just terrified about what's going to happen. Um, what's the worst that could happen? I don't know. But the point is my brain has thought of 80 things that are worse than the worst thing that could happen. And of so course. I just, of course. so sick. Uh, and Kelly Clarkson is just, She's just, she's just so real. She is. <laughs> you know? She is. And I just, she's one of those like dream people where I'm like, oh, she would, she, I think she would love us. She's like just a hometown girl just wants to like sit and sit back and have wine with her lady friends. Absolutely. And it's like, yeah, I mean, I don't want, I shouldn't admit this. I don't even know where I'm going into this, but oh God, we're going to, uh, we're going to get letters. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a wine person. It's okay. I feel bad. I feel so bad. I'll do, I know, I know. I'll do like, I'm more of a coolers person. I'll even do like a light Arbor Mist, which is like the the poor man's wine, right? It is. But I've just never been able, oh, it is. I Uh, also want to say that I, wasn't this the year that you said to me, maybe I, maybe it's the time I should try tequila again? Like, it is. (laughs) this yeah well i mean i haven't i haven't seen tequila since uh, uh about age 21 sure and that i still taste it like it was it was bad it was it yeah. was i mean i'm sure it was great and in the moment it was great but then oh, i was so sick and i just it's what's prevented me from going back so it's like yeah i'm i'm more like yeah, I'm not wine. I'll sure. do coolers. I'll do, you know, random fun cocktails. I'll even do a Jack and Coke sometimes. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> but like, I'll do a whiskey or something. I, I'm never, I'm not doing it straight. That's not who I am. But uh, just wine, I just can't get behind. I get behind everybody who loves it. Because I know you're into it. I and that's it. great. Yeah. I but just, I'm mostly a white know, wine gal. There's some red wine that I like, but if I drink too much red wine, I just become a monster. Not, I shouldn't say monster. It's, it's just, it becomes like I get very warm and just very intense. Sure. You know what I mean? And it's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's fun for, it's not fun for me. I don't think it's fun for other people. But along these notes, what yeah. you drinking over there? Um, well, we- <laughs> Which glass? <laughs> Hello. I know. I well, I started with the uh I had some Mike's uh black cherry Ooh. still. So I thought I'd start with one of those and then I got my next one ready for uh recording and then went to get one for the wings and realized I didn't have any more. 
So I've got a Palm Bay waiting for me in the way. Of course you do. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course you do. What, I want to uh, what's reiterate, happening over there. Well, I want to reiterate a couple things yeah. very quickly. One, Please. we don't get sponsored. We are not getting any money from these brands, but we're still going to talk about them because, because we're real. Gosh, darn it. Oh my um, God. And I also want the Americans and people potentially around the world who don't know this, who are listening, that Mike's Hard Lemonade, those coolers in Canada are different than in America. Now in America, they're made with malt liquor or like oh alcohol God. beverage. Yeah. In Canada, they're made with real vodka. So yeah. they taste quite different. So I know that down here, just recently at work, I was talking about Smirnoff ice. I was like, that used to be my jam. And everyone was like, oh, and I was like, well, they, they t- I forget that in Canada, they taste quite different. They taste actually a lot better. So I also this just wanted is, people to know that. This is insane. I know. I did but, not know that. Yeah. Yeah. I know the little differences, uh, but you'll love this. So this was a gift yeah. from my dear friends, Nico Santos and Zeke Smith. Yes, I am blatantly name dropping, but I've already name dropped Kelly Clarkson. So who cares? It's our show. Um, <laughs> now this is a flying embers is what this is, oh. is, the, is the name of the brand. It's a hard seltzer. It's a black cherry rose flavor, and this comes with probiotics in it. Now, I've basically just done them an ad. So, Flying Embers, if you're listening, send, send her a hat. hat. <laughs> yeah, send me a hat. Um, but I'm going to give this a go. Let's see. Oh, that's just nice. That is, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. I like is it shows our different levels that you're like, send us some cash. I'm like, or a hat. <laughs> I have never been huge with hats. Like, I have, like, a ball cap I'll wear if it's, like, incredibly hot out or whatever. But what's happened to me <laughs> that I feel the need? I just, I just want, I think, it, I think it goes back to my childhood. I just want to feel like I'm on a team. Wow. You know? We're doing I deep think work here. We are. I, th- I don't know. I don't think we've touched on this in a <laughs> while recording before, but we sure. have touched on. Yes. My, the whole feeling left out from being on a team. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I think there's a lot of psychological work I need to do there, but I think I've opened the door. Well, listen, you, if you're, you not, may not be on a full team, but you're definitely on a duo. We're in matching u- uniforms as we speak. As always, so yep. you're the first choice on my team. Always. There you go. Oh, I couldn't ask for a better team. Bless you. All right. So listen, we're going to get into it. A uh, couple of quick things. So people were, we've deviated. This is a bonus episode. Okay. So we thought it would be fun to launch an episode on Halloween because obviously we are in a very strange year. Uh, a lot of people aren't going to necessarily go, get to go to Halloween parties or events or any of those kinds of things. So we thought if you don't have Halloween plans, you're bored. Why don't you spend it with us for a little bit of time? We'll have a laugh. We'll have some fun. We'll have some drinks. Um, that's not to say you can't listen to this any other time. Obviously we encourage it, but that was kind of the intention that we thought here. So we put out an all call on all of our social medias asking you to submit your spooky stories, your funny stories, anything Halloween themed. And we've got, we actually got a really big response. It was so cool. Um, so we've picked out a little handful of them. We've got some of our own stories. So we're going to read your stories. We're going to tell our own stories. We're going to comment. We're going to drink. It's going to be a time. Yeah. I can't wait. (laughs) <laughs> and also I should just say in reference to what I just said we got such an outpouring um from people and we have been this is the other thing we would be remiss not to mention very quickly is we launched this uh, very recently and already the response from all of you listeners has just been so amazing like you should know that we weep about this <laughs> like like oh. it's so it's just so nice and everybody's so enthusiastic and you know, we talked about this on our Instagram live uh, that we did the day before we launched. And some of you may have obviously missed that. And what we were talking about was when we went to the Supernatural convention a year ago. <laughs> bear with me. You, you mean when I touched Jared Padalecki? <laughs> that was the time. Uh, right? we, we were just really taken with how cool a community it was. It was, of course, mostly women. All of us have similar interests. And it was just so nice to be a part of something where everybody was like so excited and so enthusiastic. And and I think that for a lot of people, they don't necessarily have those communities. And, and our kind of goal with what, we, what we've been doing and what we want to continue to do is to create one of those communities with all of you through this podcast. And, and everyone who has jumped on board so quickly, we cannot thank you enough. It's just been truly so fun so quickly and we're we're so excited to be all all on this journey with all of you together yeah i mean i no joke i i have had a cry about it in the last 
<laughs> like a, a, an like very quickly before we uh, joined the Zoom call to get on to record. Yeah. Just just a just a quick cry. Like I, it's it's very overwhelming, but like in the best way. Like I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. Cause I mean, I mean, I know people love you and I know like they've always, uh, like in my mind, they've loved you <laughs> for over 30 years, but I know they haven't <laughs> necessarily <laughs> well, they know me. me that. They just didn't yeah. know me. Exactly. Yeah. But I, I know uh, that you have a very lovely following. And so I do. I'm like, yeah, well, if we're going to do this, I know that they're going to love her and whatever. And I'm like, I just don't want to bring her down. That has always been my thing. I don't want to be the reason that people are like, oh. We'd like it if it wasn't for that a-hole. I love that I felt the need to, that's the one time I've ever censored myself. Uh, but I just, I had very big concerns about that because again, anxiety. Uh, and uh, it's just been beyond my wildest dreams. Like we've had messages from like, we have people from like the UK, Australia, Spain. I mean, uh, obviously Canada, US. Um, and I mean, I think the furthest I've heard of is Mongolia. Yes, this is what's so cool. So I, I went onto this app and it can tell you where you're charting you know, in terms of Apple podcasts. It tells you around yeah. the world where you're charting. And listen, if there are Mongolians listening right now, we want to thank you so much for your support because we are doing, seem to be doing very well in Mongolia, which is <laughs> such a cool thing. And that's, again, I, I talk about this all the time. The thing that I love the most about social media and the internet is that it connects you to people that, that you would truly probably never cross paths with. I've yeah. never left North America. I've never been to Australia or Spain or anywhere cool, uh, which is a travesty. Absolutely. And listen, I, I hope to travel as soon as, again, the world uh, <laughs> reopens. Um, but it's just such a cool thing. It's just, it's really like a, a really cool feeling to know that there are people cheering for you literally all over the world. It's, it's the best. It's, it's really beautiful. Cheers. I mean, oh, wow. and also in reference to you saying you didn't want to bring me down to quote, yeah. I believe Josh Groban, you raise me up. <laughs> that was beautiful. Thank you very much. Uh, I mm. really think of all the quotes I could have thought of. I didn't ever think you'd say Josh Groban, but. <laughs> Is that Josh Groban? Does he sing that? Uh, I'm fairly certain he, do he does. I think but I'm I'm, right. I love that instantly. I'm like, oh God, didn't he do a song with Kelly Clarkson? <laughs> probably not. Here we go. Prob probably not. And I'm going to feel like an ass, but I'm going to look it up after and I'm going to hate myself. But because I'm still thinking about Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> She's gonna I'm be like, for, I for just, weeks. I just wanna, I just wanna meet her, and I know that that's not gonna be able to happen anytime soon because I don't, I can't really get into your country. <laughs> well, you can, but it's a process. Yeah, and I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh anyway. my god! I mean, it's my dream to do uh, one of these in the same room. Of course, and we will, we will do, we will meet that dream. That will happen. I promise. Yeah, you like that. in a hotel, of course. You know, yeah, what, what I want is for us to enter a hotel yeah. with two one of those like metal briefcases, <laughs> oh, which yeah. we open, and then it's just like it's like a portable recording sound system. Equipment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's all I want. Oh, all right. Dream. Well, without further ado, let us kick off this very special Halloween bonus episode of True Crime and Cocktails. That's right, Twisted Tales. Our first Twisted Tale comes from Monica. She says. So my friends and I had a sleepover. We were 13 at the time. My friend's house was super old and had weird creepy ass tunnels throughout. They said it was used to hide slaves way back. Huh. So one night there was about 12 of us and we decided to sleep in the tunnels because we were dumb kids. Okay, this is already terrifying to me. <laughs> we brought two mattresses into these small tunnels so it was ridiculously crowded and hectic and no one wanted to get up and turn off the light because you'd have to walk on a mattress and step over 11 other people so we were all like no you get up and turn off turn the light off for like five minutes and then the whole ass light bulb exploded <gasps> obviously oh we all screamed and ran after that her parents wouldn't let anyone go in the tunnels they moved out about a year later maybe it was just a faulty light bulb but in the 26 years that I've been alive, in the six different places I've lived, I've never had that happen again. I think something else was in the tunnel with us that night. Hundred <gasps> percent. Oh gosh, Monica, way to kick off this episode hard. Hundred percent. Yeah. Right? I, I. Nope. I mean, <laughs> I just. 
first of all, you're not getting me in a tunnel. Second of all, I fully get kids. um, That's so a kid thing to do. Yes. To be like, that place is creepy. Let's sleep in there and see who can last the long, like that fully. Oh. But for that to, I, I have never in my life, I mean, I act as though I've seen everything, but I've never seen a light bulb explode. No. And that's like, I also, this is terrifying to me, but the part that makes me kind of laugh is the thought of like a ghost or like poltergeist or some sort of spirit that was just like, oh my God, guys. And like, just (laughs) like, there you go. Like, not totally. meaning it, it, not meaning it in like a mean way, but in like a ugh, like it's just very funny to me, but oh, also yeah. terrifying. So I no, I I do love yeah. the idea of like these twelve kids like all are you turn it off, you turn it off, and yeah, then yeah. the ghost just being like, Pfft. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like the the ghost is the parent, just like totally, ah, I'm over this. Yeah, I love that so much. That is truly chilling, and yeah, you know, I often think about like when I was a child and I didn't know real fear yet, like I feel like there was a period of my life uh, as a child where it's like you, you didn't feel fear. Like the story that I very quickly that my, uh, I've, I've told this publicly before, but very quickly when I was a kid, my mom left me home alone for the first time. I think I was like maybe nine or 10. I don't know. For some reason, again, because I had never experienced fear. I decided now, now is the time for me to take a shower. I don't know. So she leaves, I get in the shower, I get out of the shower, and then I think I hear her in the apartment, and I'm like, mom, no response, mom, no response. I open the door, because again, I'm impossibly brave. Mom, nothing, I step out, mom, I take another step, yeah! She jumps out, She, she she had left in the car, came back a few minutes later, hid, and then scared me. I screamed, cried, and peed. I peed all over the floor. Oh, Laurel. (laughs) (laughs) Laurel is my mother, for people wondering. Um, And yeah, Yeah, that that was a turning point for me. That's when I learned fear. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But again, it should also be noted that I did end up getting her back a couple years ago uh, when I was shooting an episode of Superstore. I had this very authentic pregnant belly, and I sent her a video looking very, or a picture of me looking very sad in this very you know, plausible, believable flesh-like belly. And I said, listen, mom, I haven't know how to, didn't know how to tell you this, but the reason my character on the show is pregnant is because I'm pregnant in real life. And then she lost her mind. And I, I had Ben Feldman film me as I played her on speakerphone, just losing her mind. And then of course I revealed to her. And in the reveal, I did say, this is retribution for when you scared me so bad I peed. There was a pause and she just went, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> I like how quickly she understood. Like, just she, did. she gets it. It's the oh. levels. Yeah, she was like, yeah. "Oh yeah, okay." Touché. It was. It was yeah. literally like twenty five years later. I had waited that long to re prank her, and I got to tell you something. It was sweet. Well, it's the long con, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The long game. I like it. Absolutely. Oh god. Yeah, but listen, mom. I know you're listening to this, and what I'm glad is, is that we put our prank days behind us. <laughs> I love that. I think it's for the best you get that in there yeah. because I don't want this to remind her that now you're even. So it's her turn. Yeah. I don't want her to take, I don't want her to take this as a, it's her turn. She needs to come up with something. Very good point. I think now because you I can't be... wait 25 years later. to finally. Uh, yeah. Oh, you're going into this home. You thought you were going into the good home. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I mean, I guess there's that, but yeah, that would yeah. be a that would be really that would be really too bad. Uh, but yes, you're right. No, I'm happy to like. I'm done. I'm cool. I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. I say this I, now, but then it, I should be the one to prank that. You know what I mean? Like I should do the double prank. Like I should be the oh, one to do it next to beat her to it. I can't. I, love I can't. That, I, this is not who I am. I'm instantly sick about it. I'm like, oh, am I gonna have to keep a secret? <laughs> <laughs> like I'm just. I, I swear to God, I was not always anxious, but like, but I also get the whole, like, as a child, you don't know real fear. Yes. Because I remember like when first watching the, the, I, I can't say the new, I'm so used to saying the new, are watching the original Unsolved Mysteries and yeah. seeing all these like horrific things that were happening. Um, 
there was no part of me that was like, oh, that's terrifying. Right. And I was like seven maybe. And so yeah. it's just, I should have known it was terrifying. And then a kid in um, BC went missing. And I swear to God, my first thing, like it was just like cross country news. Like it was huge because it had never really happened. He was taken from a playground. And my first instinct was that shit is real. <laughs> like I had no idea. Oh, I genuinely, wow. like I genuinely thought Unsolved Mysteries was just some TV show, whatever. There was no part of me. Like, even though this, you have this gentleman come out and he's talking about these people, but I'm just like, yeah, this is a great TV show full of TV stuff and nothing else. I had no idea. And that was my wake up call of like, wait, what? And now, now I realize, obviously looking back that that was a dumb move, but <laughs> kids well, just don't know. We don't. And I like that you and I have managed to both pinpoint the exact moment we both lost <laughs> our innocence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. On that this is note. Some, this is something I should be working through with someone professional. I'm yeah. Sure. Yeah. I've got yeah. some numbers. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next twisted tale. Uh, yeah, is that me? That's you. Yeah, I. Uh, oh, okay, I. Uh, I thought you're gonna love this. I'm not a professional, so I mean, obviously, I think I've proven that time and time again. Uh, so I just hope uh, that she forgives me if I uh, misread her uh, her story. But I think uh, she's gonna love it. We've got Kelsey. Uh, Kelsey says. One day while I was Snapchatting with my boyfriend, now husband, uh, I sent him a selfie of me laying in bed, kind of propped up on a side with my elbow propping me up. When I took the snap, I had a bit of background of my room behind me. Uh, now, mind you, I always double check my pictures uh, because I was really concerned with how I looked because of how secure, insecure I am about myself. Same. Not that I send my husband pictures, but... I feel that insecurity. Uh, so I made sure that it was good enough to, and sent it. He looked at it and immediately started calling me. I wasn't expecting him to call, so I thought maybe he would butt dialed me. He immediately asked me in a raised voice, who the hell was in your picture? I was like, what are you talking about? I told him I was just in my room. There was no one in my room, not my parents or my sister, no one. He said that there was a man behind me that looked like he was laying behind me <gasps> on the bed. I was immediately creeped out. I looked behind me. There was nothing there. I even looked on the wall to see if there was anything even remotely that might look like somebody. There was nothing, not even a poster or anything. I wanted to see what he had seen, but because it was Snapchat, it was gone forever. He's never been overly possessive or jealous before. Um, so I, it took a lot of believing on his part in what he had seen. I have no doubt in my mind that he saw a ghost of who I'm not sure six years later. And he still believes he saw a ghost that day. Oh my. Oh my God. I sorry. can't. It just, sorry, the, the video just froze there for a second. Yeah. Um, that is truly chilling. My whole body is like in full goosebumps. Mm -hmm. Like that is so creepy. That feels like the beginning of a horror movie. Oh, yeah. Right? I mean, it's, last night I watched Scream. Oh. Tis, tis the season. Tis the season. Um, and there, I don't know if you're very, like how familiar you are with it, but there is a scene where they're having a party. Yes. And Courtney Cox is in the, she's the news reporter in it. She's in the van with the camera guy and they have a video so they can see what's happening in this party, but they find out it's like seconds off. Yes. And so they're watching it and then they see like the killer come in and they're like screaming for this kid to move. And then they realize, oh my God, it's delayed. Right. And so they're not gonna, and that's what, came to my mind when it was like, there's somebody behind you. And I'm like, ah, I can't, I can't. That is so scary. I, I don't know how I would sleep again. If, if I, if that had you, happened to me, you Kelsey's don't. story. Yeah. <laughs> you don't, you just don't. It's just over. You just don't. Yeah. It's just over. over for you. Yeah. Hope you like coffee. Cause you're going to be drinking a lot of it. 
in order to function as a human. Um, 100%. Well, you know, that makes me think about, there was a time, I moved into a place in Toronto and it's weird, like, it's hard to explain, but the, the main thing was, is that I just, I, in the daytimes it was fine, but as, as soon as it would get dark, I just felt uneasy. It was really weird. And I would have these like vicious night terrors and I would feel that there was like a presence in the room and it felt very like dark. And I was living alone at the time, obviously. And I had read something that said that if you think you have a ghost in your space, that you're mm -hmm. supposed to tell it to leave, that it, that sometimes ghosts get lost and that, you know, they, they may <laughs> not be where they thought they were supposed to be. And so, and so one night, cause I had been sleeping with all the lights on, like it was like a very scary couple of weeks. I had just moved into this place. And so then one night I just was like, hey, listen to me. <laughs> no more <laughs> i was like you're lost you're not supposed to be here move on go you're, you're 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 in the wrong place and i never had another issue oh my god literally from that night on i never had another issue with the feeling like uneasy or the presence or anything like that and i i started sleeping with the lights off and everything i but i really and i should also mention that is the apartment that you have slept in <laughs> I was gonna ask. Yeah, yeah. But then I was like, nah, I don't want to know. <laughs> well, I guess I just stole some more well, innocence. <laughs> well, but here's the thing. Uh, it was gone by the time I was there, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, this is, again, this is like in the first couple of weeks I was living there. No, oh, okay. It, it seems, it sounds funny, but, I, and listen, I don't know if anyone else who's listening has had a similar experience, but I, I it did really work. Or, I mean... I mean, I do believe in spirits and energies and all those kinds of things. So, yeah. so I believe that I really was talking to it and that it was like, oh, shoot, I'm in the wrong place. I believe that. But, you know, I'm sure some people would argue that it could be that it was like mind over matter or something. But that's I, fun. I love so much. Like, I, I just love the idea. And I would totally watch this show um, of like ghosts that are just like, we have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> Just like yeah. they have no memory of their life. They have no idea what they're doing, barely know they're dead. And, or maybe they don't know they're dead. I don't know. But just like a wandering around, doing the most innocent of things, like trying to like open the cupboard to get themselves a bowl. But to you, it's fucking creepy. And you're right. like screaming, get out. And they're like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and then it's just like, what are we supposed to do? Like I... 100% I would watch that show. <laughs> You're, you know, that is a fun idea, like, from the other point of view. That is a pretty funny idea. That it's, like, from the ghost yeah. point of view that they're like, oh, shit, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I forgot where I was. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh. Yep. That, uh, yeah. I mean, I'd watch, I'd watch that. Yeah. Where it's I just, like, too. here, it would just be, because it's so terrifying from one side, but from the other, it's just, like, shit. Sorry, my bad, my bad. My bad. Yeah, let me. Yeah. I'll just get my hat. Excuse yeah. me. Oh my god! Like that's amazing to me. But like, I mean, ghosts and presences and all of that are still full terrifying to me. I mean, oh, yeah. dep okay, depending on the ghost. Oh, my mother has a ghost. <laughs> what? I didn't know this. Well, well, let's, it's, oh boy. Um, she's going to get embarrassed or maybe she fully accepts it. I don't know. So <laughs> we had a cat. His name was Elvis. I remember him. This is just uh, who we were. Uh, I believe uh, he lived to about like 16 yeah. or so. Um he always was obsessed with our dining room tables. So he would jump up on the table. And when you're in their living room, you hear the sound of him jumping on the table and it's the same sound. And you hear that little like light thud and you're like, oh, he's on the table. Well, he's been gone now for over a decade. Yeah. But every once in a while, she still hears that sound, but she hadn't said anything to me about it. And then just one day she was like, oh, eh, don't worry. It was just the cat. And I'm like, well, my, my parents don't have cats. They have right. dogs. And so I'm like, what, what cat? And she was like, oh, it's the ghost of your dead cat. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, uh, yeah. So, so now, Elvis, did you hear Elvis it? lives. I have never once heard it. No. Interesting. So, Elvis, Elvis lives despite having left the building. <laughs> yeah. He is, he is living at my parents' house. Wow. I realize if someone were to happen to like just start at this point, they'd be like, your mother thinks Elvis lives in her house? No, a cat. It was a cat. But yes, she's convinced, like fully convinced. She says she hears this noise every once in a while and is just like, oh, yeah, it's him because it's the exact same sound. Huh. So, and That's I mean, interesting. it makes me feel guilty that I haven't gone over to see him. But like, <laughs> well, you know what? The next time you go over, just scoop his ghost litter box, throw out his ghost turds, and, you know, I'm sure he'll be happy. This is the thing. That would be cats, wouldn't it? To be yeah. like, they're gone, but you still have to clean up. Yeah, <laughs> like just keeping you humble. Like that's that's what they do. Yeah, um, that is that's what they wild. Do. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. And and so, did she tell you about this recently? Uh, I'm gonna say in the last like year or two. Wow. Like, I'm pretty sure she's mentioned it to me on multiple occasions. And the first few times, I'm like, <laughs> okay, ma. Like I'm just <laughs> like in that like slowly like I should be concerned. But then you let it go. But then right. she mentioned it you know, within the last year. And I was like, okay, this has been multiple times now. Wow. So, but yes, yeah, she swears to it. She swears she hears it. And just like, there, it's not even a scared. It's just like, she hears it. And it's like, I don't know if it's a comforting or not just to know like, okay, he's still there. Right. But yeah, like, I don't know what it could be, but it's crazy to me. And who knows? Maybe he is just wandering around yeah I, I don't know well now i feel guilty what if it was the ghost of my dead cat in that apartment <laughs> oh like, you wouldn't have here go you, you wouldn't have uneasy feelings that's true that's true no there's no way hmm. i wonder if we could get like a ouija board to talk to the cats look the cats. if you think i haven't like from episode one in the back of my mind thought god i should make a list of things we can do when we're in the same room and that Ouija board is, is on that list. Ouija boards I mean, scare me so bad. I get so freaked out by them. And I'll tell you that when I was very young, uh, one of my friends, uh, we'll use that term lightly, uh, we had this like crazy Ouija board experience. And then of course I found out after the fact that she had been moving it. Oh, you can't, you can't do the that. The point of it. I would rather have mm. nothing. I would rather do nothing, like than than something. Then break your trust. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very. Ouija much. boards are a trust game. They really are. That's what they are, because you're trusting that the other person is also putting their trust in, like you and the spirits or whatever. That you're just gonna let whatever happen happen, and that's why I feel like we could do this. I think and I'm right. also too lazy to come up with a ruse. <laughs> <laughs> totally. It's like, plus, oh, who has you the know. time? Who has the yeah. time or the yeah. energy? And, I'm or shocked that I'm we've too never, anxious for it. Of course. I'm shocked that we've yeah. never done one before in our entire lives. Yeah. Well, I mean, to be <laughs> to be fair, it did take us until um a trip when you came here, I want to say about like probably five years ago to finally play the new kids on the block board game. Yeah, you're right. We were late <laughs> to the game on that. <laughs> so, uh, so I, I guess I can't be surprised that we haven't got around to that. But you're again, right. our, our trips, I mean, before like pre COVID, we were lucky if we got once a year. Yeah. Um, and so I think by the time, like once we get to see each other, we're like, we haven't seen each other in a year. We're only going to get like, even if it's a four day trip, because we don't have any direct flights between us, it's always, you lose almost the full first and last day, just traveling back and forth. Yeah. And so we get so little time. And so we have to like cram everything. in. so you think we'd be constantly busy. Yes. That's not what we do. No. <laughs> All no. we want is to just hang out together. Yeah. And maybe watch some you know random hallmark movies or like a really gritty lifetime yeah and just like snack and some cocktails and like that's all we want Holl like, uh, hallmark movies lifetime yeah. movies denny duquette episodes of gray's anatomy that's it <laughs>
hundred percent. Yes. Oh my God. Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Oh, Denny. For life. Denny, Denny, yeah. Denny. I will say that Chrissy always does this amazing job of like, she plans what she's going to, like what we're going to eat while I'm there. And it's always like very exciting. And the, the, the thing that really took the cake was she made a cookie dough bar oh, and the cookie oh, dough was made without was eggs. So it was safe to eat raw. And then she had all of these toppings that you could mix in. My mouth is watering. That was honestly like, Man, oh man, that was the best. So cute, so smart. I mean, ten I out of ten. Already, I had already forgotten about it. I will never well, forget about that. I, I will that, never let you forget about it again. That's <laughs> that's just that's really beautiful. I I'm see. I'm still. I told you I had a cry earlier. T- <laughs> earlier uh, about like just how beautiful and how embracing this yeah. whole journey has been. And so I just, I'm not, uh, I'm not used to, I'm not used to a lot of compliments. So this is just, it's, it's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. And am I t- getting emotional over, <laughs> over a cookie dough bar? Yes. Um, <laughs> but that's just, that's just where I'm at. And uh, you raise me up. <laughs> we can't afford it. I gotta stop. I'm gonna get Oh my dinged. God. Unless he'd like to send us a hat. <laughs> <laughs> Not everybody has hats, Christy. Well, yeah, uh, he might. Uh, <laughs> listen, on that note, we're going to take a quick break. Go grab yourself some raw cookie dough. Get yourself another drink. Uh, tweet Josh Groban. Tell him we love him. And uh, we'll be right back with more Twisted Tales on this episode of True Crime and Cocktails. All right, we're going to get back into it. That's nice. Do we just keep recording the same thing? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Because we can't handle that clap again. <laughs> nope, we can't. We barely got it the first time. <laughs> oh my gosh. What do we think this is, Reggie or Reggie? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Reggie. Okay. I'm not 100%, but... All right. I also, and you're going to love that this is where I'm at. I wish that I had asked, like, when we sent out the, hey, send us your thing, I wish we'd also been like, and let us know, what are your pronouns? I know. Because I feel bad just assuming... Well, you know, yeah, we're going to have to just, well, well, we'll just, we'll talk about that right now. We'll do that right now. Okay. Welcome back everybody to Twisted Tales, a Halloween bonus episode of True Crime and Cocktails. We were just talking very briefly on the break there that we wanted to just say that we should have been asking what your preferred pronouns are when we asked you to send in your uh, story. So we apologize for that. And of course we're very exclusive, inclusive here. Uh, (laughs) At, at the at True Crime and Cocktails, hashtag True Crew. Um, so we do apologize for that misstep. And you know what? Again, we're all learning. We're all, it's all on a curve. And uh, we, will, we will make sure to ask next time. Yeah, just know that we thought about it now. We, we, yes. A little late. But- Listen, it's been, we've had a very busy few weeks. Uh, <laughs> so please do forgive us. We, we appreciate your patience. We're, we're two old broads. Uh, in our, in our <laughs> mid to late thirties and we're doing our best, but we do care. Um, so we're going to just jump right back into this next twisted tale. This is from, I believe Reggie. I think that's how we pronounce that. Here yes. we go. I won't name the university in an attempt to keep them anonymous, but my alma mater was haunted as fuck. The university is located in the city, but it's set back in the hills. So it's far more hidden and quiet than you'd expect. The campus itself is made up of old mansions, 150, 200 years old or so, that were donated and converted over time into classrooms and dorms. One of the buildings even has an honest-to-God speakeasy that has a hidden door and everything. I would get to campus before 7 a.m. as I was a student worker in IT. In order to get to the main campus, I had to walk up these old steps that looked straight out of Donkey Kong. They were creaky, and every day I walked up, I wasn't sure if I was hearing footsteps of a fellow student or a resident ghost behind me. Every single day. I heard the steps, rain, snow, shine, didn't matter. They were the same cadence. If they got too close behind me, I'd spin around only to find no one there. Mm. From the stairs, I would often cut across the quad to get to the mansion that was converted into the IT center. I was the only student worker until about 12 p.m. or so, and the full-time staff often left me alone to, to man the desk, which was hidden behind a corner, so I'd often hear people before I saw them. Again, footsteps would sound walking down the hall and I'd look up expecting to see a student only to stare at a white wall as blank as my job prospects during an economic recession. (laughs) Twice though, I had my head down studying when I felt a very firm tap on my shoulder. It was the kind of tap Mm. someone gives when they're trying to get the attention of someone distracted. 
What was weird though, was that I hadn't heard any steps down the hall. I looked up, saw nothing in front of me. I peeked around the corner only to realize that the staff had locked the doors so students weren't able to get in. When one of the employees came back, I told them what happened. Their response was, oh yeah, this place is super haunted. You get used to the taps and shit. Thank you so much for telling me in advance. <laughs> oh my gosh. Nope. 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 <laughs> um, I couldn't, I couldn't handle the footsteps. Nope. It would make me just full terrified that I was always being followed. Yes. I would last a single tap and I'd be out. Oh, yeah. Just didn't matter what it paid, even nope. if they paid in hats. <laughs> Which, of course, would be a dream for you. <laughs> Apparently. I don't. The joke is, I'm going to get end up with so many hats for Christmas, and I'm not going to know what to do with it. I'm not Blossom. I don't wear hats. Blossom. Oh, that was a, that's a deep cut. Again, uh, two broads <laughs> in their mid to late 30s. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because it, it was Blossom, right? That, oh, yeah. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't six that wore the hats, right? No. Six was just the one that talked really fast. Yes, but I think that she also, I think that everybody was wearing hats back then. The girls anyway. It was, those, well, remember those velvet hats with the flipped up bit the with brim, the, the brim, the yeah. brim with the big flower. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, with the big flower. And they couldn't make Joey Lawrence wear a hat because with that hair, you can't hide that. Whoa. Thank you. I had to. <laughs> I love For those of so you much. who are under the yeah. age of 30 who have no idea what we're talking about, that was Joey Lawrence's catchphrase on the show Blossom. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. has been your oh pop-up God. video moment. Pop-up video is something that exists. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh, it's gosh. just an endless spiral. All of our references are. Yeah. And if you're under the age of 30, under the age of 30, oh, good for you. I know. That's a lot of life left. And oh, I say that it. as someone who hasn't hit 40 yet, and that's yeah. a lot of life left. But yet, in my brain, it's like, oh, I got a foot in the grave. <laughs> <laughs> Which feels Listen, appropriate for I a get it. Halloween whenever episode. I, yes. Whenever I hear that yeah. someone was born after the year 2000, I'm like, first of all, how dare you? Second yeah. of all, I think exactly what you do, where I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Good for you. Good for you. You've got time. So much time to time. I'll take it. Cheers. Yep. Oh man. I'm, I'm onto the white claws now. Listen, I, uh, I just, I'm just starting the Palm Bay. Uh, well, look, we're in sync. Yeah. Well, and sync was a band. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, not even kidding you about, um, about a week or so ago, we're in the car uh, me and my 15 year old. Yeah. And we're, oh God, I, I still can't even, the fact that I have a 15 year old. Yeah. Uh, and I think I was picking him up from practice or something and we're driving and uh, an NSYNC song comes on the radio and he was like, is this NSYNC or Backstreet Boys? So like, he's at least slightly educated. Right? Got it. So he's like, he, he knows it's one. And I was like, oh, this is actually NSYNC. And he was like, oh, okay. He's like, and that's, that's like, what's his name? And I'm like, yeah, that was Justin Timberlake. Um, and JC Chavez, was that right? Chazé? Chazé, is it? I don't know. I don't know. I just remembered. I am JC from Kids, or from Mickey Mouse Club, which was a show. In the late <laughs> night. <laughs> which also had Britney Spears and Christina right. Aguilera and Ryan Gosling. And yeah, I can't. Yeah. Um, but the point is, we were in the car, we are talking about NSYNC, and I'm like, yeah, and that's Justin Timberlake. And he goes, oh, yeah, I think I know who he is. I'm like, well, and because he's like a smart-ass teenager, he's very used to the internet. So I was like, oh, here we go. This will help him know who that is. So I was like, well, in like April, people post a meme that have him in this meme. And that is where actually this song is from. And he was like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, oh God. And so I was like, well, it's this meme. And so I realized like halfway through explaining it, it's just, it's, it's obviously a meme used by slightly older people. <laughs> because Yes, if you have to explain has, it. Yeah, he had no idea what I was talking about. 
And then I went into the hole, like I even did my best, like Timber, like it's gonna be me, which is not my best right there. But I went into it and he was just like, he stared at me. Like I was, like I had said something so much worse. Like he just was like, what are you talking about? And it's like, oh, nothing, never mind. But like, yeah, I just, that gen, that generation, man, I don't know what to do with that. Well, I'm realizing now again, this is like, yeah. it's so cyclical. It's so, I remember when yeah. I was like maybe 12, grandma like got out her records and she was like, puts on Karma Chameleon by Boy George and goes like, didn't, her quote was, bet you didn't think I'd have this hip music in the house, huh? I was like, oh my bless. God, angel bless. on earth. Yep. Oh my God. Oh. Anyway. Oh my God. Hip music. Hip music. Karma, karma, karma. We got to stop singing. If we, if we, <laughs> we we're going to get pulled down. I can't afford this. I mean, unless this becomes a musical podcast. They I guess do that's not, true. I mean, they want it from you, but they don't want this. I mean, they, no. I'm going to get you karaoke before we're done. Oh, I mean, I, I'll be honest. I have karaoke once. Ah. Oh. Yes. Um, my mother-in-law had it at her wedding. Oh, right. And I got super drunk, like mm -hmm, super mm -hmm. drunk. Yeah. And, uh, one of my new, uh, sister-in-laws, I guess, uh, her husband's, one of his daughters, um, she convinced me to get up there and I don't even remember what we sang, but we had a great time. So <laughs> it was, it's. I mean, I'm not even going to lie. I, I do have a dream karaoke song, but I don't think it's actually, I don't think it should be a dream karaoke song. It's my favorite song to sing in the car when I'm by myself and it's like there's nobody and I can just like drive it on the highway or something so no one will see me awkwardly just screaming, singing at the top of my lungs. Do you think that I can guess it in five questions or less? Oh, Oh, I like this. <laughs> All right, we're going to play it right now. All right, is okay, the song yeah. by, a, by a female artist? No. Okay. Is it a, is it of, uh, is it a rock and roll song? Um, okay, Nana. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I guess. Oh, oh, no. Okay. Uh, is this a, a song that's post-1990? Yes. Okay. I'm starting to realize that five questions is not very Wait, funny. wait, wait. What are we calling, like, are we, when you say post-1990, you're it meaning, like, released? 2000 and plus? It, was it released after 1990? So anything after, after 1990? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Again, I'm just realizing that, like, in fi five, five questions is going to be tough. But listen, yeah. let's, let's see if I can get there. Okay, so it is a male artist. It is a... Yes. Uh, uh, post-1990, and it is of the rock and roll persuasion, kind of? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is, it a, is, it a, is it a male solo artist, or is it a band? It's a band. It's a band. Yeah. Uh, is the band Canadian? Oh, I don't think so. Okay. I'm going to feel bad. No, I don't think so. Is the song Radioactive by Imagine Dragons? No. <laughs> I mean, I okay. mean All this, right. I, this was a fantastic <laughs> response, but no. Okay, so let's, I obviously okay. failed, but why don't you give me, give me a clue? Give you a clue. Yeah. Um, oh, God. Um... I, okay, I'll give you two. Okay. I'm going to narrow it down to the 90s. Okay. Um, and although this won't feel like much of a clue, it was, I, I think it was fairly popular on like teen movie soundtracks. I think. Is it a Smash Mouth song? It is not. <laughs> <laughs> What's the song? Uh, Teenage Dirtbag. Ah! Yeah, that's good. That's a good Look, one. I don't know if I don't know how it would be uh, karaoke wise. I just know that the last few times that I have flown to see you, because again, 
there's no direct flight, so you're just flying all day. Yeah. I'm usually on the highway at like 4 a.m. trying to keep myself awake. So I'm just that on repeat, singing it at the top of my lungs. And I have so much fun that I just feel like it would be a great karaoke song. But I'm just, I'm not really a, I'm not a singer per se. Everybody so, can sing. Everybody well, can sing. Oh, not well. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I mean... I love that now I'm racking my brain. I'm like, was it just the once I did sing? I think so. I don't know. I do recall going and witnessing a very certain karaoke competition in Toronto. Yeah. Alas, um, Morissette. Thank you very much. I do much. recall that. It should also be known that it wasn't karaoke. This was jammy What's that? That's karaoke, but with a live band, baby. Uh, and I did sing uh, You Ought to Know by Alanis Morissette. And it was yeah. a contest, and I lost. <laughs> <laughs> and then, as we were walking yeah. back to my apartment, a car pulled over, over like six lanes, pulls over to hit on this one. Because that red hair glistens in the night and she just brings them in like, like moths to the flames. It's, it's a beautiful thing to watch, I gotta tell you. Well, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't take compliments or like a lot of positivity well. I don't know how to handle it. I think there's a little too much British in me mm. because I just don't know how to handle it. But... Um, going on <laughs> what i love is you're like i don't know how to handle compliments but i do know how to compliment myself and i like that i like that more of that yeah yeah i just found like going into a bigger city there were more just like more more flavors out there that was <laughs> poor choice uh and but just yes yes they uh they like the small town girl, I guess, yeah. is how it came out. Yeah. Listen, so do I. Oh. You yeah. raise, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, Josh. Seriously. Can I call you Josh? Send us a hat. Yeah. I'd love that. All right. Our I next twisted that. tale. This is back to you. Oh, this is back to me. Um, this one is from Nikki. Mm. Um... She said, I have a ton of ghost stories, but my favorite is my grandma coming to visit. While she battled cancer, she lived with our family and I gave up my centrally located room to, to her to make things easier. Throughout our house, we had a few different touch lamps, the kind where you touch it to turn it on and touch it again to make it brighter and then to turn it off. My grandma loved them. After she'd lost her battle to cancer, we were reminiscing in our living room, and I said how sassy she was. At that moment, the turned-off lamp turned on. Nothing was near it. Then I joked how she was making a point, and the light turned off. It happened a ton of times after that, and the touch lamp in my room stopped working and was constantly stuck on, like she was reminding me she was always there or something. Oh, I love that story. I mean, that's so sweet. I love that. Um, well, I especially love that because, as you know, uh, we share a grandmother, <laughs> and uh, yeah. um, um, my mom, your uncle, they share a mother. Well, not that's, my uncle, but oh my god, listen, it's okay. I'm, it's I'm, okay. I'm into the booze. <laughs> your dad, my mom. There we go. Um, but yes, we shared a grandmother, and she. She always used to tell me that she was like, you know, Lauren, after I pass, I'm going to come back to you. She told me this for years. And I was like, okay. And because we both believe in that stuff. And I was living in an apartment. This was pre the haunted one that I've already uh, referenced. <laughs> so it was very small. Toronto, downtown, these apartments are very small. And uh, there was a kind of a narrow pathway to get from my living space into my bedroom and in like a sliding closet was a, a, a stack washer dryer. And so I walked through the hallway into my room. I came back out and all of a sudden there was a puddle of water in the middle of the floor in front of the washer dryer. And there was no, it wasn't like it was streaming out of anywhere. It was literally like this puddle had just appeared there, like in the middle of where I was walking. And I will remind you mere seconds before it was not there. I was like, that's kind of weird, but oh, I guess maybe it's just some fluke or whatever. Cleaned it up, didn't think anything more of it. 
<laughs> made sure it wasn't cat pee and <laughs> moved on. <laughs> um, yeah. Because you don't know. Uh, and so the next day I did the same thing. I walked through that same area into my bedroom. I walked back out and literally in the exact same spot was a pool of liquid laundry detergent. Now I had a bottle of laundry detergent. It was not turned over. It was not leaking. It literally, I swear to God, it just appeared there. And at that exact moment, I literally was like, oh my God, she's here. <laughs> I was like, hey. And then I just started talking to her because I was just like, this is her telling me she's here, clearly. Um, and so I would just chat to her all the time. And then a few days later, and this is the this is the like crazy part that I can connect to uh, to Nikki's story there, especially was I had this, this uh, it was an iPod dock that you could put in and it was little speakers that had a radio attached, all of the above, but there was no batteries in it. It was, you had to plug it into the wall. It was not plugged in and I swear to God, it turned on. And I was oh. like, there's no power source. There's no batteries in there. It's not plugged into the wall. It hadn't been plugged in in, in weeks. So it wasn't like, Maybe there was some residual charge in there or something. It literally just started to go, which was slightly terrifying. But I think because I had already experienced these other things and was so convinced that it was grandma, I was just like, okay, you're here. I got you. <laughs> now, my question to you. Yeah. Was it Karma Chameleon? <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know what? I don't remember. Oh, wow. That would have. I wish or something I hip. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I don't remember what it was. I was also like, so like out of my mind in that moment. Cause I was like, what's happening that I feel like I wasn't even registering like what was being said through the radio. Uh, yeah. But I bet you it was, I'm going to say for the, for the, let's say for our, our purposes. For making it an even more beautiful story. Yeah. yeah. Cause that's nice. I will yeah. say when I moved away from that apartment, I was scared that she would get lost. I was, I, and I, cause I literally talked to her all mm -hmm. the time. And as I was leaving, I was telling her, I was like, we're leaving, we're moving, we're moving somewhere else. Like, don't get lost, whatever. And, and I, I will be honest, I didn't feel her at my new place. I didn't feel her. Uh, I felt like she would <sighs> be moved on. But you know what? If, if that was her time with me and then it was time for her to move on, I mean, I don't know what the rules are post-death yet, obviously. Sure. Uh, yeah. I was glad that we had the time that we did. So that was a nice thing. I think that's really lovely. Yeah. I'm glad you guys could have that. It was nice. It was yeah. nice, you know? I mean, I did also have a have a experience a couple of years prior. I was at a boyfriend's house at the time, and he had a radio turn on. And then there was, like, it was, like, talk radio, but then there was, like, a demonic voice. That it was that was really creepy. So, we, like, we were <laughs> laying in bed. It was late at night. Actually, no, the radio was already on. It was already on for sure. And it was on like some jazz station, which yawn, no thanks. Anyway, no offense to the people who like jazz. It's just not my thing. Uh, and he was really trying to get me to like it. And I was like, I don't think I like it. And I think that's okay. Anyway, um, so there's like this jazz music playing. And then literally this like, this voice came over and was like, help me. Why won't you fuckers help me? Like it was terrifying. Terrifying. And he and I both were like, turn the radio off. <laughs> That is awful. It was awful. That one was really, really scary. Is that was this also that was the long same before this other stuff? Right now, is this also the same boyfriend who's like who didn't have an indoor bathroom? Because that's already a horror show for me. <laughs> uh, no, this this, okay. this one okay. did. This one did. Okay, just <laughs> I'll fill you in after. But yes, um, he did. He did have his own plumbing. Thank okay. God. Just checking. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. that was, uh, that was long before any of these other stories. That was before the grandma stuff. That was before the other haunting as well. I feel like maybe I, I don't know. I feel like maybe because I am like You're receptive, open. I think You're it does to I, it. a lot of it. Yeah. Oh, listen. Cause I, something, I mean, what, hap something happens and you won't just brush it off as nothing like everybody else. Yeah. Well, and they're and like, Oh my God, this is our way to communicate through her. Right. You're basically medium. <laughs> Yeah, and I listen. Yeah. I'm proud of it. I'm proud. Yeah, why not? Why not? They All couldn't right. have chosen a better host. Oh, host, God, God I hope they don't take you. <laughs> Look, if any ghosts are looking to start a podcast, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, we'll have you on as a guest. Just let us know. I shouldn't be saying that. I shouldn't be yeah. invoking spirits. Oh, now I'm freaking myself out. We're moving oh. on. We're yeah. moving on. That's too creepy. All right. All right. This next one. Oh God, now I'm like, I've, I've got like the, I've got like the sweats. I'm like, why did you just ask a ghost to join the podcast? That's terrible. Look, I have to just, I, we need to make it clear to the ghosts. 
Yes. If you're going to join the podcast, just know there's going to be a lot less hats than you think. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, yet. 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 Again, I don't want a thousand hats for Christmas. <laughs> I just need I to. hope you're getting ready to build some shelves because you're going to need them. <laughs> Hat I deserve racks. it. I deserve it. Yeah. Just can't <laughs> let go of a bit. I love it. All right. This twisted tale comes from Shannon. It's called The Case of the Haunted Tupperware. I love this already. I love that it's got its own title. I do too. That's I love very it. cute. We had just moved into a used mobile home after our previous one had burned. Oh, that's sad. And we had received a set of food storage containers as a housewarming gift. I was home alone washing the dishes and realized one of the lids to the containers was missing. This upset me because it was a brand new set and all I could think of was all the mismatched lids and containers we had previously owned that my mom would never get rid of in case the match turned up. I looked around the kitchen and became increasingly agitated when I couldn't find the lid. I think I may have cursed out loud. I heard something whoosh across the kitchen behind me, strike the refrigerator and clatter to the floor. The hair stood up on the back of my neck. I slowly turned around to see that, yep, it was the missing lid. <gasps> oh my God. I carefully bent down to pick it up and timidly said, thank you. Uh, I'm going to go for a walk now. <laughs> I put the lid on the counter, left immediately, rode my bicycle a couple of miles away and didn't come back until the rest of my family returned home. I did not mention the incident to them. Was it a ghost? Am I telekinetic? Did I just imagine it? This mystery remains unsolved. Ah! Well written. Yeah, well, that's um, our brand right there. Oh, very on brand. Yeah. That one, that's chilling. I love yeah. that she, I love that she also, she or he, Shannon, it could go either way. Uh, I love that this person uh, rode their bike two miles away. <laughs> like, it was not enough to like, I got to yeah. get out of the house, I got to whatever. It was like, no, yeah. I got to get out of Dodge. I love that. Yeah, yeah. I think my favorite is the very timid, thank you, like, <laughs> because that is absolutely something I would do. Like, I would just, like, it's there, and then you're just like, thanks. Listen, like, I think if terrifying. we've established anything over the past hour of our lives, it's that I am very comfortable yelling at and speaking to ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> so I would yeah. do the exact same thing yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, wow. That yeah. is chilling, though. That is really scary. Can you imagine? Yeah. Where's that lid? And then it literally comes out of nowhere. Yeah. Like, especially if you're, like, really getting frustrated and agitated and just, like, you're building up so much energy and then just, like, you just snap and then suddenly it appears, like... Yeah. That's... Well, that, yeah, then we are into telekinesis. Well, yeah. And that's terrifying because there is something about energy. Well, you know? well, that's so, science too, right? Like that's, oh God. energy cannot be destroyed. We, right? Isn't that one of the things? I don't know, but I would like <laughs> to start a science podcast with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, where are we going to find the time? It's going to start, so, I, require so much research. I, oh, oh, but that's the joke. We won't research that one at all. <laughs> It'll just be Lauren and Christie's loose opinions on what could be science. <laughs> yeah. 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 Energy. Yeah. I don't think you can destroy it. I'm not sure. Moving on. <laughs> what are we, not the doing Ghostbusters? Well. This Ghostbusters. One. Maybe we don't do a science podcast. <laughs> if Ghostbusters was my go-to, maybe not. Maybe oh, not. I love it. I love it But there's so something much. about energy in that movie, yes. isn't it? Like, I'm talking like the original first movie yes right mm -hmm. yeah we watched that fairly recently because again tis the season you know season absolutely yeah. tis the season to be creepy right yeah yeah now do you have any other i feel like we're you know getting to the time maybe we should start to wrap things up we've had so many amazing yeah. twisted tales do you have anything that you want to add well i mean i do have that one story but some may have heard it already because I told it, we went on a uh, Bigfoot Collectors Club. Yes. Um, had a great time. I was physically ill <laughs> before because again, it's just, it's, it's worse for me when it's, I didn't know them. And I, I just, again, I was like, I'm going to bring this episode down. No. And then what I learned is I told my story and uh, I freaked them out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> To the point where they were just like, well, 
that's unsettling. And it's like, they, they do this all, like they, they've been doing this for years and they hear these kind of stories all the time. And to hear one and go, oh, didn't care for that is very, very unsettling. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I totally agree with you. It was an amazing experience in the moment because uh, obviously like we were having a great time. They're so nice. Those guys are so, so nice. We had so much fun. And it was that moment of like the experts basically like yeah. pausing and going like, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> and I, yeah, you absolutely have to tell the story because I'm, I know that I'm sure that a lot of people that heard that episode are listening to this. Uh, but I also told, uh, you know, a version of the story about my grandmother as well. And by version, I mean the exact same thing, basically, um, on that show. But this story is unbelievable. And I think it is only right to wrap up our Halloween special Twisted Tales episode by you telling this story. Because there's going to be a, a fair amount of people who also haven't heard it. And it needs to be heard. <laughs> I mean, okay. I need to preface this with, I don't know how much of this is real. Of course. You know, like, sure. I, 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 I was awake. I'm f- sure of it. And my mother was there briefly at the end. So I was definitely awake, but I just don't know. Um, and yes, I did, we have told it. But if you've heard it before, it's not going to be exactly the same because I don't remember. I kind of black out and don't remember <laughs> things. that I I say after we're done. Like, it's just the terror is real. Of course. So, again, having a great time, and I love this so much. Yeah. But the terror is real. So, um, I was about six or seven, and we lived in a small town in Manitoba, and I was walking home from school uh, because, I mean, back then in the 80s, a kid walking at that age by themselves, however far, was not a big deal. It's just you walk home from school. That's what you do. Yeah. So I cross the street from the school and I go a couple of houses and there's an alleyway and there is this kid standing there about my age. I've never seen this kid before. Uh, Dark, like mushroom cut kind of hair. So I can't tell boy or girl. Like I distinctly remember white t-shirt and like green, like the classic 80s gym shorts. Like, you know, the ones that kind of curl up in the middle. Uh, I, and I remember this kid and I don't remember what we talked about. I just remember the kid kind of was like, you should come with me. Let's go hang out in the woods because at the end of this alley was kind of the edge of town and there was this big set of woods. And I was like, yeah, this, this is the, exactly what I should do. So I go with this kid. We walk down uh, the alley. We go, we start walking through the forest. Forest makes it seem so weird, but uh, we're walking through these woods and we, we, to the, like, to my right, there's a hill. And suddenly in the, like, built into the hill is this round kind of fountain. And it, it looks like, um, kind of like a bathroom sink that comes out of a, of a wall because it has, like, a wall behind it and then it juts out. And the bricks are, like, dark gray, almost black. And around the edge of this fountain are just a bunch of rats that are dead and like it looks like their necks have been broken because they're all at weird angles and in the fountain is just blood so instead of water it's blood it's just blood uh and then there's just like there's a tiny bit of blood around each rat so i guess i was supposed to like my brain was like well each of these things have been drained and their blood is filling this fountain is kind of where my brain went with that so I see this and I'm like, this, this isn't right. Something, what the hell is this? I turn to the kid to be like, what, what the hell? Because at that age, I wouldn't have known to curse. I'm like, what's going on? I turn, the kid is gone. So I'm like, I don't know what's happening. So I go up the hill and, I, and I'm very close to where my house is. So I, I'm up the hill, I'm on the street and I start running and I see my mom's car pull around the corner. She like stops in the middle of the street, comes over and she's freaking out, like drag me to the car. She's losing her mind. And I'm like, I just, you got to see this thing. Like it's a, and she's just like, she doesn't want to hear it. And I'm like, it's, I, I know I've only, I've, I left school, but I should just be getting home by now. It's been like 15, 20 minutes. And she's like, you've been missing for hours. 
And then I got full punished, 80s punished, as I put it. Um, <laughs> like sent to bed. I had to, like, I have the distinct memory of like sitting on my bed, looking out the window at my friends playing at the playground in the middle of the street after, because they'd all gone home and they'd had their supper and they were right. all playing outside, but I was sent to bed early and I was watching them and I was very upset about it. But like, I don't know what any of that was. Like, well, what's amazing is when, when she told yeah. this story on, on Bigfoot Collectors Club, they immediately were like, oh, that sounds like a classic fae story. Now the fae being yeah. like fairies who in lore have been known to lure children into the woods. Like this is apparently like part, like in folklore, this is like a huge thing. Yeah. And so that was amazing that first of all, they were like, well, the first thing was they're going, oh my God. The second <laughs> thing was like, basically like, I feel like the, the impression I was yeah. getting is that they were like, we've only ever read about this. We've never heard somebody actually talk about it. Um, right. But then what was the chilling moment for me was that you were like, you know, I've talked to my husband about it and we've thought about like, oh, should I go back and look and see if that fountain was there? And I was like, hey, yeah, listen, like maybe when COVID's over, I can come up and we can take a road trip. And all of these guys were like, do not go back there. Like, yeah. in, like yeah. not a joke, not a bit. They were like, do not go back there. And then the one quote was like, they may, the Faye may be like waiting to finish the job. And that like made me mm -hmm. like, again, mm -hmm. like goosebumps, a chill up my spine. Like I was like, we're never going back. Yeah. <laughs> we're not going, we're not going to mess with you. We're not going to mess with the Faye. We're, we're not right? going to do it. When they asked, they were like, well, when, what made you think of this story recently? And I'm like, oh, I had a dream about it. And they're like, tell us about the dream. Like they, <laughs> they, they were losing it. They were like, what's happening? And I was like, oh yeah, I just, I saw the fountain in my dream. They're like, maybe it was calling you back. I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. That's nice. That's nice. I oh mean, my God. I mean, I mean, that is wild. Now my question for yeah. you is I have a couple of follow-up yeah. questions because now oh, obviously- please. Um, at the time, had I was time most, to absorb, I yeah. had time to like, you know, reflect. Um, <laughs> so how, so you said you were how old when this happened? Like seven? I was probably about six or seven. Yeah. And then, so, okay. Six or seven. So did yeah. more unsolved mysteries viewing happen after right. this? I think so. Yes. That's what's interesting to me because when, when we were talking about this, I was like, I wonder if, you know, is it possible that some that she saw an unsolved mystery and then that let it, but it's not. This happened prior. I'm I'm pretty sure this happened before that. Yeah. And the other thing I will say is the level of detail that you remember, like the fact that you remember like the color of the bricks, like the specificity about all of it, like that's what I, really ch chills I, me to my core. I see. I can see that fountain in my head, and I have like I I told them like I had I had that dream about it. Uh, last year and that's what reminded me of it because I had completely forgotten about it but I I've, I've dreamt about it off and on for years and I think that's why I keep remembering it because I keep remembering that fountain so I keep thinking like was it a dream that I had but it's like did I go to the woods and then take a nap like that's a weird thing and it's just like I think there was something and my brain was like I cannot compute what that is yeah and for some reason I was like you know what makes more sense a rat fountain with blood like what <laughs> that doesn't make sense at all but you know what's yeah. interesting is is that obviously i mean and you tell me i don't think this is something that we, although you're a born researcher i don't think this is something that you had researched prior <laughs> to now correct like in, in your adult years yeah. so this is what's amazing to me is that after we did we guessed it on that podcast and they mentioned the fey thing i started to look up and read a little bit about it and what's crazy Ooh. is that this is so similar to these other accounts and these other stories. And to be honest with you, I creeped myself out so badly that I stopped because it was so specific. And it's one of those things where it's like, I always find it fascinating. And this is, listen, this is something that's an unsolved mystery in of itself. Um, <laughs> is when people around the world at different places, it's like the Slender Man thing, right? That it's like people yeah. around the world all experience this same phenomenon that there's no real explanation for. But how is it possible? Like, how could all of these people be experiencing the same thing and recounting the same tales, again, like millions of miles apart, 
that to me is, is proof that it's like, well, there has to be some level of truth to all of this, regardless of who knows what the actual, you know, science again is behind sure. it um, sure. of, of what this is. It's just interesting to me that you experienced something uh, that you had no idea was like, like textbook. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and that's the other thing. I didn't know there would be an explanation for it because I have right. always been like, I've got nothing, but it was the second, like, as soon as I said it, they're like, oh yeah, it sounds like this. But, and then I didn't say it to them, but when they were like, it's the fae. And I was like, like fairies? Cause here's the thing. So, and the joke is I, I purposely held off on saying it because one of the guys from that, it was on True Blood. Oh, right. Yes. So I watched True Blood for several years. And then like, they were like, at the very beginning of the show, it's like, oh, there's vampires. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then they're like, oh, there's witches. And I'm like, yeah, there are. And then I think at one point there's werewolves or something. There's like uh, shapeshifters and there's all these things. And I was just like, every time I'm like, yeah, add them in. And they got to a season that, where they were like, okay, guess what? fairies and I just went oh fuck off and I was out <laughs> I was done I never picked up after that because I was like fairies please done but isn't it interesting that what we've uh -huh. learned is is that fairies are not all tinkerbells they're also like can be very conniving potentially evil yeah. forces and you had a visceral reaction to it yeah wow. which I mean I don't know if that means I need to like revisit the rest of that show, uh, who knows? Maybe I just need to re-binge. I don't have the time. But like- <laughs> have so much going on. <laughs> uh, I, it's, if it's gonna come down to research or that, I, I'm gonna choose the research. But yeah, the fact that like everything else, every other creature they come out with, I'm like, yeah, I will accept that. I'm into this. And then they're like fairies. And I was like, such bullshit. And I was out. So it's like, oh my God, now it's like, was there something that like it's in my brain of like oh yeah you don't believe in fairies don't worry about it you didn't see any sort of fair any sort of fae like creature you saw nothing you saw this bloody rat fountain that's totally normal <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah it's, because yeah there i thought it in that moment but i didn't i can't go on the dude's podcast <laughs> and be like oh that show <laughs> i fucking dropped it <laughs> But maybe but, he would have responded with the reason I dropped it was because I couldn't handle. As soon as they said fairies, I was like, nope. I mean, the fact that you're also someone I know who has binged, like, you know, who is committed to like all seasons of Grey's Anatomy. Like you're not somebody that usually yeah. gives up on any shows. So it's no. just very interesting to me that your body was like, nope. Like you were just like, so like I shut down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I shut down and never even considered going back. And now, and at the time I was like, I guess I've just hit my, my, that was my level. I couldn't go any further. And so I'm like, okay. But now that we're talking about all of this, it's like, oh shit. I had a huge reaction. It's like this, this story, this is going to get me on a shrink's couch yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, better a shrink than an exorcist. That's all I got to say. Oh my gosh. Oh, right? Um, I got to say, I was just realizing I, I've completely teed up the next episode of True Crime and Crocktails without even realizing I'm talking about people who have experienced the same thing in multiple different locations at all, all apart from one another, but they experience the same thing. This yeah. next episode, this coming Tuesday of True Crime and Cocktails Unsolved Mysteries Edition is the Berkshire's UFO episode in which, of course, there were multiple people what what have I done? Have I done something wrong? This is going to be air. after that. This will be after this episode. Okay, well, we'll cut this. We'll cut this. <laughs> Ryan, we'll cut this. And I'll say this. I'll say this. Mm -hmm. I'll go back. I'll, I'll make it work. Good God, Lauren. <laughs> I'll make it work. Um, you know, what I realized is that I was talking about multiple people who have experienced the same thing in, in different places at the same time, which is basically yeah. the Berkshire's UFO episode of Unsolved Mysteries. That's another yeah. example of multiple people who experienced the same thing completely apart from one another. And then, I mean, that was in a smaller area um, to begin with, but 
I mean, there's been millions of people around the world who've had similar UFO experiences. So my point just is, is that I think, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. That's my scientific analysis oh. of this. Oh, I like and that. Yeah. Do I think that the Fae lured you into those woods? I think that that's a real possibility. And that chills me. I, I mean, they did say to us, they're, they want you to, like, it's amazing to us they let you go. It was that quote that I was like, pardon? <laughs> like, what, what, what are, what? well, it's, it, I, I do what's need amazing? You to know that, that yeah. I, again, in the research that I started to do, these stories don't normally end so well. So I, all I, I'll, all I say is, mm. I'll say is that thank God they did. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you live to tell the tale. And I, I'm glad, especially that yeah. you, you live to tell it as a twisted tale in this Halloween bonus episode of True Crime and Cocktails. I, even though I feel like you've given me a warning, I feel like I also want to research it. I can't. Like, I feel like that would break me. Like, I would snap mentally. I think maybe we, maybe let's put it on the list. Let's put it on the back burner and we'll go to it when it's not so fresh. Slash yeah. Halloween time. Slash yeah. watching horror movies. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe like nice and Christmassy feel where everything's lovely and just like surrounded by like eggnog and Hallmark movies. And yeah, that's when I get into the horror. <laughs> dip your toe into what exactly the paranormal experience you experienced really was. Yeah. Oh gosh. Listen, yeah. I just want to take this opportunity to thank everyone who submitted your twisted tales. They were so great. I'm sorry we didn't have time to read more, but we, we loved getting all of them. Thank you to all of the people whose twisted tales we read. These were fantastic, creepy, so great. Um, if you've thought of something that you want to share with us, if you've been inspired by this episode, email us, theories at truecrimeandcocktails.com. You never know when we're going to do another bonus episode because I'm going to be honest with all of you, we're, we're, we've been bitten by the podcasting bug and now we're just <laughs> excited to keep making content for you. So I hope you're excited and buckle up because we're going to be just putting more out. That's just how, yeah. that's just what it is, plain and simple. Yeah, we, I mean, we said it again, we're before, we, we go like a week without doing this and suddenly like the face pops up on our Zoom and we're just like, ah, God, I missed that. You know, so like, true. but again, in constant contact every day, yep. all day, yep. but yet it's that face to face. And some may say, why don't you just stick in a Zoom call every once in a while if you miss it so much? And the answer is, we don't have the time. We don't have time. <laughs> but you know what else? Do you know what I think is, is the, and that's another special thing about this podcast, is that it's yeah. forced us to make the time, and that's a beautiful thing. You're right. You're right. Yeah, I'm right. And what I love is our face-to-face -face time, as faces we can be, um, is recorded for all to see. <laughs> yeah. And here. Yeah. yeah. So they get to uh, partake in, you know, Justin Timberlake memes and, <laughs> and <laughs> Christy's obsession with fucking hats. <laughs> <laughs> and me butchering Josh Groban. It just makes sense. Butchering his lyrics, not him literally. Oh. He's a treasure. We love him. Uh, <laughs> it is the Halloween episode. You're right. You're yeah. right. Uh, well, listen, we hope everyone is safe and sound. We hope that you enjoyed this Halloween bonus episode of True Crime and Cocktails. Christy Oxborough, thank you as always for being here and for sharing and opening up about your terrifying stories. <laughs> well, I <laughs> didn't know they were as terrifying until people <laughs> started freaking out when I told them. <laughs> Sure. So, I mean, the know. fact that, that you didn't think that the, the broken dead rats in the, in the fountain of blood was that terrifying says a lot again about your experience. <laughs> oh, I mean, I think I was in shock because I couldn't figure out what it was. But again, I still don't know what it is. So I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's been over 30 years and I, I, I'm, I'm probably too scared to figure it out. And I think that for now, maybe that's for the best. <laughs> As we close yeah. this chapter in Christie's traumas, <laughs> we encourage you to open a new chapter, which is your Instagram account. Follow us at True Crime and Cocktails <laughs> on Instagram and Facebook, at Not Detectives on Twitter. Uh, and listen, if you want to email us a theory about an unsolved mystery, if you've got a, f a crazy story you want to tell us, if you just want to say hi, email us, theories at truecrimeandcocktails.com, and make sure to visit our website, truecrimeandcocktails.com. If you want to watch the full unedited Zoom videos of our recordings, uh, they all live there, uh, along with some extended case files that Christy 
has made about each of the unsolved mysteries that she deep dives. It's all there for your pleasure. Christy, do you want to have a, a final word to the people? Um, I love that I'm trying to think of uh, something that's nice or that I haven't said before, but just we love you guys so much. And not you guys. I don't mean you guys. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to be better. everybody's love and support it's been a really really beautiful journey <laughs> yeah it has been it has been yeah. and and listen we can't make a podcast unless people want to listen to it so we appreciate all of you so much all of the enthusiasm all of the listens all of the downloads we thank you all around the globe uh and again we hope that in this crazy year where halloween is not necessarily what we all dreamed it could be that maybe we gave you a little bit of a smile and, uh, and made your days a little bit more fun. So uh, thank you, Christy. You're the best. You're my rock. And thank you all of you for listening. We'll see you next week. Oh, are we going to announce the next episode? Because the, the next episode of the show is the new Unsolved Mysteries episodes. Oh. Ooh. I don't know. Are we? I think we should. Should we? I think we should tease it. Do you know the exact name of the title? Because I don't. <laughs> I have been researching it for four days. So, okay, here we so go. Yes, I'll tee it up. So everybody, you're going to want to make sure that you tune in for this coming Tuesday's episode of True Crime and Cocktails, where we start season two of the new Unsolved Mysteries on Netflix. And the first episode that we have chosen to deep dive, that was a drum roll, is... A Death in Oslo. Get ready for it. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah.